First, person has contact with coronavirus. After several days from exposure, symptoms occurs. COVID symptoms last for two to three weeks. After this period, usually patient is recovered from COVID-19 infection. But if symptoms lasts more than three months and you cannot explain them by alternative diagnosis, it is called long COVID or chronic COVID or post COVID. To say simple, if COVID symptoms last more than three months, it is long COVID. Most common long COVID symptoms are fatigue, difficulty breathing, cognitive dysfunction, others, which generally have an impact on everyday functioning, and lowers quality of life. Difficulty breathing is one of the most common and prominent symptom in patients with long COVID. Breathing difficulty is huge problem for patients because it's really difficult to live with breathlessness. Breathing is difficult on minor exertion. Unable to walk upstairs without becoming short of breath. Moderate physical activity, walking up four or five floors, leads to a period of extreme breathlessness and exhaustion. Unable to walk further. And constant feeling of fatigue. Sometimes, when person has difficulty breathing, it accompanies fear of death. It causes anxiety, fear, and it additionally increases everyday limitations. Because of fear, person begins avoiding exercise and physical activity to reduce difficulty breathing and it starts a vicious cycle, leading to a deterioration in general performance as well as social isolation, reduced self-esteem, and anxiety. Difficulty breathing like pain. Both of them are subjectively experienced symptoms making measurement of severity is difficult because every person experienced it subjectively. However, individuals commonly experience pain in early life and are therefore able to recognize and describe it. While breathlessness is a symptom experienced less often and the lack of previous exposure might make its recognition more difficult. Medically, difficulty breathing is called dyspnea. Dyspnea is an uncomfortable, abnormal awareness of breathing. Every person has her own definition of what is dyspnea because they experiencing it subjectively, but it most frequently described as shortness of breath, inability to take a deep breath, or chest tightness. Uncomfortable breathing comprised of various sensations of varying intensity, dyspnea frequently accompanied by cough. When patient has dyspnea, first step is to identify what is underlying cause of difficulty breathing. There are three main potential mechanisms by which COVID-19 could modulate breathlessness, inflammation in the alveoli and lung tissue, thrombosis and associated microclots, neuroinvasion. Let's discuss each of them. Coronavirus infection invades and causes inflammation in lung tissue. Inflammation in the alveoli causes impaired gas exchange in the lungs, resulted damage of alveoli and edema in the lungs. It means less oxygen in the blood. At this case, breathing rate can be normal or decreased. Second possible mechanism of breathlessness. Infection with COVID-19 causes activation of the coagulation cascade and subsequent endothelial cell damage. When clots and microthrombi forming in the lungs, it increases area which does not participate in breathing. It is called physiological dead space. Patient tries to compensate this deficiency with fast breathing, which is called hypercapnia. And third mechanism, coronavirus damages cranial nerves, for example, olfactory nerve, which is responsible on sense of smell. Many patients infected with COVID-19 have reported loss of smell, which is called anosmia. Damaging of cranial nerves may alter the function of the respiratory centers which can cause a neurogenic breathlessness. Difficulty breathing can be symptom of several undiagnosed conditions. For example, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which comprises emphysema and chronic bronchitis, generally present with a long history of cigarette smoking, and gradually progressive dyspnea over a number of years, this condition can be worsened by COVID-19 infection. 
a productive cough is a frequent associated symptom, and the sputum may become purulent during exacerbations. Asthma, periods of dyspnea frequently alternate with periods of normal breathing. Seasonal and diurnal variations in symptoms are common. The patient usually perceives wheezing. A productive cough is frequent, particularly during recovery from an acute attack. Asthma or can be temporary or permanent sequelae of COVID infection. Pulmonary fibrosis. Patients with pulmonary fibrosis generally present with progressive and relentless dyspnea with a variable time course. Frequently the only associated symptom is a non-productive cough. Pulmonary fibrosis was observed in some patients with post-COVID conditions. CT scan can be used to evaluate patient for pulmonary fibrosis. Persisting fatigue and dyspnea may also relate to parenchymal scarring of lungs or milder forms of post-infective myopathy. Treatment is dependent on underlying cause of dyspnea, but general principles are if a patient is a tobacco smoker, this should be discontinued. Various inhaler therapies may be used in respiratory disease, including short-acting or long-acting bronchodilators, inhaled antimuscarinix, and inhaled corticosteroids. Pulmonary Rehabilitation Program, which is key for faster clinical recovery, vaccination against influenza and streptococcus pneumoniae. Controlled breathing exercises and techniques, such as an upright leaning forward position and purse lip breathing are also beneficial. Negative emotions have a major impact on breathlessness perception, while positive emotions reduce the intensity of perception of breathlessness. Prognosis of breathing difficulty during long COVID is depend on the underlying cause, but generally improves over time. But it may take months to years for fully recovery.